Terrain is one of the most important factors in victory and defeat, both in Hearts of Iron 4 and real life. Sending green infantry to fight in the Alps is not going to end well, nor would sending tanks to fight in the marshy floodlands of Louisiana. In this video, I will go into depth on how terrain really works in Hoi 4, both in terms of the terrain types themselves, as well as battalions and support battalions and their impacts. By the time you are finished with this video, I can say with certainty you will understand the game on a deeper level and do better in your playthroughs. Parts of this video will be detailed, but I want to make clear you don't need to remember all of it. I'm making this video to teach you the concepts and to understand mechanics broadly. As long as you know what terrain is at the end of the day, that's what matters. Let's get going. Starting with the basics, every division deployed will sit on a tile and or province. These are portions of the map which can be clicked on and which your units move on. Tiles are parts of states, which are where supply, buildings, and the economic elements of the game are done. But the tiles in a given state may have wildly different terrain types each. In order to see terrain as a whole, simply click on the terrain map type, which gives you a clear overview of areas to plan around. Clicking on the province, you will see at the bottom of the menu a picture of the type as well as its stats if you hover over it. Each terrain type has its own unique modifiers which affect a number of things we will cover, but the most important is probably battalion stats. The statistics terrain itself will affect our battalion's attack, defense, and movement. For example, force terrain reduces attack by 15% and decreases movement, aka the speed of your divisions, by 50%. Note I am saying battalion and not division. Battalions are each of the icons you add when you are making divisions and will have different stats and modifiers. For example, infantry have no terrain changes, but artillery gets major decreases to movement and attack in certain terrain types. A division's total terrain stat changes are based on the average of the different types of battalions in a given division, which you can see here in the designer. Battalion modifiers are added to base terrain modifiers. So again, looking at force, let's say you have a 10 width infantry division and nothing else. It will still have a 15% attack penalty when attacking onto it. But let's say you made the choice to have a 10 width division of only artillery. I don't know why, but let's just say so. You would then get a total of 15% attack decrease plus another 20% from the division and battalion stat changes, making a total of 35% reduction. Terrain stats themselves will affect a division's soft attack, hard attack, and breakthrough. For battalion modifiers, attack changes soft attack and hard attack. Defense, however, again for battalion stats is kind of strange. It will change a division's defense stat, but also the breakthrough for attacking. So if you have a 5% bonus to defense for force terrain and are attacking into this terrain type, your breakthrough goes up by 5%. Breakthrough being used to determine essentially defense when attacking, and it will allow you to push longer and do more damage. This is one of the most important and impactful things to cover for terrain and to get an understanding, but there are a lot of other huge changes that you also need to understand. The second most important thing for terrain and division design in Hoi 4 is combat width. This is the stat you will hear Hoi 4 players talk about and debate endlessly, largely due to the fact that battalion changes, as well as combat with changes, go with every big update. I'm not going to get into all of that, but rather talk about what it is and how terrain defines it for context. Every one of the battalions in your division has a width. When added up with all the other battalions, you will get the division width seen here. Why this stat is so important is because if you do not fit into the battle lines efficiently, you lose a bunch of your division's power or could even overstack. Let's look at a short example of a battle where this is at play. In this conflict, which is happening in a plains province with a width of 70, this is due to the defending unit being in that terrain. If it was the other way around, the battle would be enforced instead. The defending division only has a width of 18, with no other units to back it up to defend. This makes it very weak as there is another 52 width not containing divisions. The attacker's divisions equal a total of 70 because they have a lot more they're bringing to bear, allowing them to bring huge amounts of stats and making victory imminent. If let's say the attackers were pushing from another province on the defenders, the combat width of the battle would add another 35 combat width, resulting in 105. From three directions, it would be a total of 140, with that extra bit added each time. 
This is why attacking from multiple directions is way better in Hoi 4, but is only really properly utilized when you have the divisions to fill the space. If, however, we are attacking with divisions whose width does not line up well with the width of the battle, they will not put their max stats to bear and could even overstack meaning the attacking divisions will have a width higher than the combat width in battle and suffer huge decreases to stats. Every terrain type has a unique combat width, which is why there is no perfect division in Hoi 4. All division widths are really just based on what will have the least chance to overstack while fitting as, as many as possible. Think of it kind of like Tetris, if you got to design the Tetris blocks. You don't always know what you will be dealing with, but certain block shapes, like widths, are better to use and will make your life easier. Looking at where you are fighting and designing divisions to fit accordingly is key. Terrain defines this, and it's important to be fully understood. Napoleon was one of, if not the greatest strategist in history, and his victories and unique skill is in large part due to utilizing terrain to the best he could. Just as Wellington's superior use of terrain was one of the major reasons he won instead at Waterloo, though we are using a much more abstract and simpler scale, the sentiment remains. Every division moves from province to province in Hoi 4, which is dictated by the speed of the division itself, the distance on the map itself between the two middle points, as well as the terrain type. The terrain type's effect on the division's movement is based on what percent of its path is in that certain terrain type. For example, moving from a plain to plain tile incurs no stat changes and is just the difference between the two middle points. If you are moving from planes of no impact, to mountains, the route taken on that distance in the mountain province to its center gets increased by 100%, resulting in a much slower time. And lastly, for perspective, if you moved a division from a desert province to a hill province, its distance in the desert is increased by 5% due to the terrain bonus, while its portion in the hill province increases by 50%. Remember, all the changes are not really important. It's just good to understand this when moving divisions and seeing how impactful terrain is for the game. One of the ways you can get attrition in Hoi 4 is movement. This is both when you are simply moving a division unimpeded, but also when attacking with a unit. Defending units don't suffer movement attrition. Attrition will make your unit lose equipment it carries, which will be replaced with proper supply, but even then will hurt your overall military economy. Terrain types will increase this sometimes dramatically, and just like movement time, it's based on the terrain type of the two tiles and dictated by the terrain of each portion. For attacking units in a battle, they are actually moving very slowly, but it's impossible to tell where they're at. This effect is why you will find yourself losing equipment way quicker in jungles, desert, marsh, and mountains. Use the terrain map and make your offenses act accordingly. Without going into how air mechanics work fully, which I cover in my air guide, air superiority basically means who is winning the airborne war in an air region and getting green air. When a nation has air superiority, the enemy units in the covered region get a percent decrease to their breakthrough, which is the attack stat when defending and defense itself, allowing you to push them much easier. The exact amount of the decrease is based on the full extent of the air superiority, meaning if you're winning more, you will get more of an impact. But the other major factor is terrain. Certain regions will decrease the effect of this, allowing defending units to hold easier and making the defense stat not be hurt as much. This means, for example, a unit defending a push in a force province when the enemy controls the skies will have more defense and breakthrough than in a plains province. Therefore, defending when you're losing the air war means you should try and hold terrain that helps forest, hills, mountains, and especially jungle and urban terrain. Generals of assigned units are able to get sick, which will put them out of action for a month. They can only get sick with at least 75% of their assigned divisions in certain terrain types, which include desert, jungle, or marshes. If so, the commander has a 2% chance to get sick every day. If let's say two of your divisions are in the jungle and three are in planes total, there is no chance you will get sick. But if for example, three of your divisions are in jungle and one in planes, you are still able to get sick. So keep that in mind. Supply I cover in detail in another video, but is closely tied to terrain as would be expected. Rougher terrain types will decrease the amount of supplies that make it to provinces through your hubs and routes, meaning you will be more often undersupplied. This is why your units will often not be at full strength when fighting in certain terrain, like jungle. 
Trucks are used for supply for any supply hubs and commanders who are set to use motorized supply routing. This is found on supply hubs and in the commander menu. It's recommended to really use this whenever possible as trucks are just the most efficient way to get supply. Terrain impacts supply mechanics massively and for truck attrition, it's increased based on the terrain type as may be expected. It is very impactful statistically and can stack with the effects weather has as well. This chart shows you the effect terrain types have, which as you can see ranges dramatically. Jungles and marshes will hurt so much more, it's sometimes even worth going horses. Keeping this in mind, it's important to make sure that you are producing enough trucks to get supply as running out due to issues with attrition will be dramatic. Now that we've gone over the impacts and implications of just how important terrain is, I now want to cover each type briefly in terms of what it changes and what units will do well in it, as well as what to just generally avoid. Planes are the most common abundant terrain type in the game, taking up around 30% of all provinces in Hoi 4. They represent generally flat and easy to maneuver terrain. As such, there are very few battalion bonuses or negative bonuses besides reconnaissance support companies, which give divisions a flat movement bonus of 5 to 15% respectively. The combat width is a base of 70, with an additional 35 added for each new direction included in additional attacks. Tank divisions are at their best here, not suffering from any penalties, so trying to push these regions with them in order to dominate. Planes are also the least defensible terrain in general, and a major weak point, so building forts there for defense if you have to hold them is advised, or frankly, better yet, give up these provinces to entrench better terrain. They also are one of the most likely terrain types to get mud, which is a brutal terrain modifier I cover in marshes. The second most common terrain type is forest, which includes a little short of 25% of all provinces in the game. This is the terrain you will be trying to defend in besides hills and mountains due to the natural defensive advantages. Its combat width is 60, with an additional 30 added for new directions. In terms of the flat impacts of division stats, movement speed is increased by 50%. So again, if you move a division from a plain style to a forest style, this distance of that which is within the forest province is going to be statistically increased by 50% making it take much longer, which naturally will also slow pushing. A flat 15% to attack affects any division trying to push into a forest tile, making it naturally primed for defense. In addition, air superiority effects are reduced by 10%, making it even better for defending, though it only matters if you're losing the air war in the region. On the supply side of things, any division on a forest tile will receive 8% less supply from hubs, which can be inconvenient but is not too bad, in addition to increasing truck attrition by 20%. For battalion changes, attack is affected by flame tank support companies, which are amazing and really should just be anything you can get. They increase division attack by a flat 5-10%, which is massive. Motorized and AA battalions lose 5%, anti-air artillery, rocket arty, and mechanized lose 20% attack. For armor, light tanks lose 20%, mediums 30, heavies 40, and super heavies 50%. This means when pushing force, tanks do worse than most other terrain, so really try and use infantry if you can. For defense changes, engineer companies give a flat 25% bonus to divisions, which is huge for holding. It also will again increase breakthrough, meaning engineers on a unit attacking a force province will take less damage and push for longer. Movement is only increased by recon companies from 5 to 10%, but is slowed for anti-air, anti-tank, artillery, and rocket arty by a small amount. Tanks receive a massive 40% movement penalty, and is the only terrain type to do so besides rivers, jungles, and marshes. Commander traits earned in combat, or if starting generals occasionally can also impact terrain. For force, the ranger trait is very useful and will increase your division movement by 5%, as well as attack and defense by 10%. The third most common terrain type is surprisingly mountains. They are natural barriers, which provide incredibly useful defensive areas and are a pain to push. Given the amount and impacts we're about to cover, it's really important to make mountaineers, depending of course on where you're playing and planning to fight. With a combat width of 50, an additional 25 for adding directions, they are very narrow, meaning few units are able to fight in a given battle, adding to their enormous defensive advantage. The movement penalty is 100%, meaning all travel time within Mountain Province is doubled, slowing movement dramatically. Division attack suffers a monstrous 50% penalty, 
the largest of any terrain type, as well as decreasing the effects of enemy air superiority by 10%. For supply, all attrition from moving in mountains is increased by 30%, alongside receiving 12% less hub supply and raising truck attrition by 100%. From this, it should be very clear that mountains are the best for defense besides perhaps marshes, and will be very costly to take. Mountaineers receive a division attack bonus of 35%, again showing why they are so key in addition to light, medium flame tank support battalions giving another 5%. For penalties, motorized and mechanized suffer 5%, and tanks will suffer a whopping 10-40% to on top of the other penalty. For defense, mountaineers receive a 10% increase as well as a 20% increase to movement. And lastly, for movement, recon companies give a 5-10% bonus, with anti-tank and arty taking a heavy 20% penalty. Mountains are natural fortresses you need to take advantage of. Make mountaineers and place them there to hold them, allowing you a front or region you can worry about less. Pushing with tanks on mountains is absolute death sentence for your equipment and will take forever. However, defending with tanks is incredibly powerful as your defense and armor stats will not be affected and will only take attrition from weather and supply issues. Also, keep in mind that fort bonuses stack here, so an infantry division attacking a mountain with a 10 fort will receive a penalty to attack of over 200%. The Mountaineer Commander trait is a lifesaver with the normal bonuses allowing you to hold even long. The Mountaineer Commander trait is a lifesaver with the normal bonuses allowing you to hold even stronger and have a better shot at actually pushing. With roughly 13% of provinces in Hoi 4, hills are the younger cousin of mountains but remain one of the most useful places to defend. More often than not, they are adjacent to mountain tiles, so planning defensive lines using both is key. The combat width is 70 at present, which is the same as planes, adding 35 for each direction added. This does cause an issue for mountaineers, who typically are built at 25 width, but it's not the worst. For combat stats, attack is reduced by 25% and air superiority by 5%, in addition to movement cost increasing by 50. Supply from hubs is reduced by 10% and truck attrition goes up by only 20%. Again, hills are much better for defense compared to plains, but are much less effective than mountains or even really forests. Mountaineers get a 20% increase to defense, a 5% increase to defense, and a 10% increase to movement. They are what you want to be using here more often than not, but given tanks really get mild penalties, it will be pretty rough when facing any real division. What is interesting here for armor is light tanks give no debuffs to attack, while mediums and heavies and super heavies get very mild penalties. Armor can do very effectively here, and with no additional attrition, really increases as your best option. Engineer support companies give a 5% increase to defense, while recon companies giving a movement bonus, and being the only other major change. Overall hills are a useful terrain for defending but present a much less major obstacle for strong units on the offensive. Frankly, keep in mind this terrain type is less safe or hard to push than it may seem. Hillfighter is the commander trait that applies here with the normal bonuses. Deserts are a very misleading terrain type to deal with in Hoi 4. There are not a lot of them technically, but they are in some of the most important places strategically in the game. The North African front is key and will be fought over with the Suez Canal being a major prize. A combat width of 70 plus 35 for additions makes it the same as planes, allowing division's width to be fit and easy with most designs. There is no attack penalty, only a 5% increase to a movement cost and no air changes. Supply is where things get rough as there is a 15% increase to all attrition in areas that are naturally very low on supply to begin with as well as a 14% decrease for any supply coming from hub lines. Trucks also take a 50% increase during their supply. You're going to bleed equipment and struggle without major investment in building to maintain good supply. In addition, these provinces have high chances of getting sandstorms, which massively increase air losses and their effectiveness, decrease supply by another 15%, and raise truck attrition by a massive 300%. Temperature, which I cover in a different video fully, also stacks on top, with very hot being common, increasing attrition, lowering attack by another 10%, and increasing supply consumption by a huge 50%, as well as, of course, increasing truck attrition even more. Desert terrain may seem to be inconvenient, but honestly, if not respected, can be a massive resource sink and cost you a game. There are no notable battalion changes to attack besides a 5% for camels, which you're never going to use. 
What is interesting though, is that the engineer support company give a 20% increase to movement and recon support gives another 10. Both of these are advisable on all divisions deployed here with the logistics support company being incredibly useful for supply and attrition issues. For desert terrain, most of you will naturally know where these regions are, as well as it being very visible on map modes itself. It's important to understand the supply issues and make special divisions that can cope like actual Germany did with the Africa Corps. Desert Fox is the trait you can get, which will give you the usual terrain stat changes. It's also important to note that they are a region where commanders can get sick, and more than 75% of their divisions are in this type of terrain. Jungles suck. They really, really suck. Avoid them for combat when at all possible. Most games you will not have to fight in them, given they are primarily found in South America. The areas you may encounter them on a more practical and consistent basis is Central Africa and Indonesia, with the latter in particular being fairly important for resources. The combat width is 60, with 30 added per new direction in battles being the same as force. Attack is reduced by 30% for all divisions. Enemy air superiority bonuses are reduced by 25%, and movement increases by 50, which is a real pain to push in. Supply hub routes are decreased by 16%, and truck attrition goes up by 300%. Most importantly, attrition goes up by 20% as a whole, which is brutal given these regions also tend to be very hot, which I covered in deserts. Commanders can also get sick in jungle terrain. Flame dings increase attack by 10 to 15%. Almost every division type gets a lowered attack, but it's the worst for tanks, which are basically useless, losing 30 to 70% of their attack based on type. If you use armor, optimally use light tanks, and at max, use mediums. Engineer support companies increase defense by a whopping 25%, making these provinces even more of a pain to push in. Recon support companies give a movement bonus, which is key, given how much of a hit most other division types take. Jungle Rat is the commander trait with no unique bonuses besides the usual. Urban terrain is probably the most important besides mountains and plains in terms of what needs to be understood, due to the fact it contains victory points. Victory points are cities of varying sizes, which are key due to making the enemies lose war score quicker and capitulate, as well as being where their industry tends to be. The other huge region is because they give a lot of state supply. Without getting into the complex details of supply, which I do cover in another video, state supply is divided in a state when contested between two sides, but a large part of it is just straight up coming from victory points, so taking it really helps push a front. There is a 30% penalty for attack, a 20% movement cost increase, and a massive 50% decrease to enemy air superiority. They are a huge pain to push in, but this is alleviated by battalion modifiers a little bit. Supply is actually increased in urban provinces by 20%, which also makes them easier to hold. Flame tank support companies increase attack by 10 to 15% and are huge. Tanks will get a massive attack loss of 40 to 60%. Light game engineer support companies at level 4 also do give a 10% attack and defense bonus. Urban assault specialist is what you get for fighting in cities and helps a lot. Urban tiles are huge for supply and winning wars, but suck to try and push. Frankly, for your armor, the best strategy when micromanaging is to push around urban tiles if the terrain is not mounts or force, optimally to encircle it, or simply provide more attacking directions to make it more doable. This is really key and should be remembered for easier wars. Marshes are the worst terrain type in this game, for attacking and really just in general. They're what can stall a front and one of the main challenges when pushing the Soviets as Germany. Part of this is of course the terrain modifiers, but the biggest reason is a ground condition called mud. Have you ever actually walked through deep mud after a lot of rain? When wearing Wellington boots, it's actually quite a lot of fun, but in regular shoes, or let's say when driving a tank, it's an absolute nightmare and one of the most underrated aspects of military losses in history. Mud is a modifier in Hoi 4, which affects terrain as a weather condition, with the game actually having a log for stored water in every province due to rain or other factors. More rain in a region will increase the chances of mud. When enough rain builds up in a region, there is a chance every day that mud is affecting the tile. This is massively increased for marshes. It can appear in any terrain type, but is naturally much more likely in marshes at 90%, of the closest of a relevant type being planes at 50%. Mud increases attrition by an insane 90%. 
Attack is reduced by 40%, which will stack with all other modifiers. Speed is reduced by 50%. Supply goes down by 40% just across the board, and truck attrition goes up by 100%. Marshes themselves will increase your attrition by 35%. Decrease attack by 40%. Increase movement cost by 100%. Allow your generals to get sick. Decrease supply by 60%, and increase truck attrition by 400%. Again, marshes just suck. But thankfully, they're in very short supply. Pun intended. Let's take a quick look at where they are found and are most important for your games. On the border of Poland and the Soviets, there is a huge patch which will make pushing way more brutal and is the most potent and dangerous portion of marshes in the game. It also happens to sit on the Dnieper River and just south of the Dalgava River. I know I'm butchering that, but I tried, which makes a natural defensive wall going either way. This march patch is a nightmare, so try and push around it, even though it's very inconvenient. To the north, there are several small regions which are on the way to the strategically key Leningrad port. The southern tip of America's Midwest, from New Orleans to Houston, has a patch of coastal march, which is a real pain. Again, it's the Soviet region's march fields are most relevant, so really watch out for them. Amphibious armor, marines, and flame tank companies give huge benefits, so if you're trying to push marshes, try to use them. Swamp Fox is a trait you actually will get for fighting this terrain, but it's so rare, you're only going to get it if you get stuck fighting in these regions as Russia or Germany. The other aspect of terrain to cover, which is separate from a province's terrain, are rivers. These are terrain features which are in between provinces and have an impact when being pushed across or defended from. They stack on top of weather, temperature, and ground conditions, in addition to being multiplied to terrain modifiers, making them incredibly impactful, which is why you will quickly see how much of a pain they are to use. Rivers come in two types, small and large. Small rivers will decrease attack and defense, again only for attacking divisions, by 30% and decrease movement by 25. Large rivers increase this to 60% for attack and defense, lowering movement speeds by 50. Given it only affects attackers, but impacts defense, the breakthrough, which is affected by defense modifiers for attacking divisions, is lowered. Amphibious armor gets the insane 40% attack bonus, Marine divisions get 30%, and flame tanks will give 5 to 10 to any division they're in. Tanks get the insane hit as well, so when pushing rivers, making a contingent optimally of amphibious tanks is the best, but very inconvenient, so making marines and micromanaging them across rivers is huge. Engineer support battalions increase defense by 25%, which again will only affect attacking divisions, but will offset the breakthrough hit from the terrain. The engineer commander trait increases river attack by 5%, giving a nice little bonus. And lastly, forts. These are buildings which can be constructed on any province, reducing any attacking division's offensive stats and breakthrough by 15% for each level, though it is reduced when attacking from multiple directions. Forts actually only cost 500 IC to build at level 1, which is very cheap. Each level adds 500 IC cost for each level below, which gets very expensive as you fortify it deeper. A level 5 fort, for example, would cost 2500 IC, while a level 10 would cost 5,000, which is a lot. This means building a couple levels in places you want to defend on useful terrain like optimally mountains is very useful and low cost for many nations. It's also key to know where your forts and the enemies are to avoid it when pushing and pull back or even try and go around it. The best example for this is the Alsace Lorraine fort line that France has, which makes pushing them as Germany a nightmare. It's doable, but why you probably want to try and go through Belgium. This concludes the terrain guide for Hoi 4. I hope this video gave you a proper understanding of terrain in the game and why it's so important to understand. I also have videos on all aspects of Hoi 4 with guides on weather and supply being of particular note. If you have any questions, leave a comment and have a great day.